Hello. My friend's educational degree is PhD in a scientific field. And it is with his permission I'm publishing his story. The names are fictitious. The first person author is Adam, his wife is Don. The villain is Butch, and Butch's wife is Lenora. This was written from the perspective of some years after Adam's escape from the false reality of alcohol. Don and Adam had been married for five years. Both had finished their university degrees and they moved to San Diego, where Adam had a very promising job. Soon Adam experienced the not unusual disappointment of passing from the excitement of academic scientific studies to the ugly competitive reality of business. Adam's liking for alcohol continued, although typical of alcoholics, he tried to ignore how distressful this was to Don. Don and Adam met a very interesting couple, John and Sylvia, who were well known in the San Diego boating world. John was some 30 years older than Adam and 25 years older than his wife Sylvia. John had been an important figure in the economic development of the port city of San Diego. These two couples met from time to time over cocktails and dinner and enjoyed each other's company. John was very impressed by Adam's having earned a PhD degree. At the time it was not obvious that John and Adam shared a weakness for alcohol and that both Don and Sylvia found this distressing. One Sunday afternoon in July, Don and Adam were visiting Sylvia and John where they lived part-time on their boat. No one remembers how the subject came up, but John said that a young couple who did not intend to have children might want to consider a more adventurous lifestyle. Why not sell the house and buy a seaworthy sailboat and leave aboard her and save money until they were ready to sail long distances? They could continue to work at their jobs and acquire their skills, the skills they would need for sailing adventures. Of course, they would have to learn to live in a small space, but sailors had been doing this for centuries. When Don and Adam expressed an interest, John offered to help them. As a yacht broker, he could advise them and help them find a seaworthy boat. He also steered them toward a local yacht club where they could live aboard their bo boat. He was totally honest in his desire to help Don and Adam with their dream. He was not motivated by personal gain. Later, it became clear that Don was partly motivated by wanting another interest to separate Adam from his excessive drinking. When they met in school, when they met in school, she had accepted his drinking. She assumed he would grow out of it when he earned his degree and entered the real wor world and held a steady job. Soon Don and Adam began to spend all weekends on their new boat, repairing, painting and practicing sailing and diesel engine maintenance. The yacht club was a friendly and congenial place, but most of the social life centered on partying and drinking, not very good for Adam. They became close to another older couple in the next boat slip, Butch and Lenora. Sometimes Butch and Lenora would visit Don and Adam at their home. They had sold the house to Don's parents as a retirement home and used the money to buy their boat. This house was just a short drive from the yacht club. One day Butch told them his marriage was in trouble and he and Lenora were separated, but he continued to visit alone. Adam refused to see what was going on. Although he became suspicious when Butch brought expensive brands of alcoholic beverages, but did not touch a drop himself. 
It was almost as if he were saying to Don, Look at me and compare me to your drinking husband. Once Butch helped Adam remove a car starter, found a mechanic to fix the starter motor and sent Adam off for several hours while he and Don remained at the house. Watching TV? Still, Adam refused to see what was happening under his very eyes. Adam saw Butch as his best friend. A betrayal was not possible. At last there came the day which still divides events in Adam's life into before and after. It was a Sunday. They had been sailing with friends. Don and Adam went to their house, soon followed by Butch with expensive liquor to share, but not touch himself. The three of them were watching a program on a color TV that Adam had assembled from a do-it-yourself kit. Adam and Don were sitting on the sofa while Butch sat on the floor at Don's feet, almost leaning against her legs. In a long, overdue flash of insight, prompted by their body language, Adam said, Don, and you are going to leave me and go with Butch? And then it all came out. Don and Butch had been seeing each other for months, never overnight, but at every opportunity, such as when Don explained that she had taken the afternoon off from work to walk in the park. Their plans included no mention of Butch's wife, Lenora. Butch was eager to drop his middle-aged wife, the mother of his children, for a childless woman 22 years younger, with a government career. It is still painful for Adam to think about these events of decades ago. Of course, there is more to the story, but that Sunday evening was the most shattering thing Adam had ever experienced. If he were told tomorrow that he has one month to live, it will be less of a shock. It is difficult to believe now how trusting and naive Adam was. He did not know the real world and the fog of alcoholism distorted his thinking. He had actually dreamt of a life as a vagabond sailor accompanied by his wife Don, captain and first mate. Based on how Adam remembers things, this account is highly subjective. If told by another participant, it would sound very different. The time between acquiring the vagabond dream and hitting the real uh, the wall of reality was 20 months.